Larry Kudlow, uh, who joins us now from CNBC, host of the Kudlow Report. Larry Kudlow, you were not too pleased with the fact that the president made what you consider pretty partisan remarks regarding the economic crisis in light of what was happening down there at the Navy Yard. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he started out okay. I mean, this is a, it's a, virtually a mass murder going on. And then instead of staying with that and, uh, you know, trying to deal with that and talk about that, the guy launches into this speech, which the last third, I guess, of the speech is just a blatant partisan you know, attack on Republicans uh, for not getting the budget done. Okay, as though it's their fault that he doesn't want to negotiate, which he doesn't. Well, and as if that has anything to do with the financial, like like the lack of a budget had anything to do with the financial crisis of 2008. Uh, that is correct. <laughs> that is correct. That's a very good point. Actually, I hadn't thought about that point. But they have work in front of them. Look, I, I, they've got two weeks to keep the government open and uh, generate some kind of continuing resolution. My point, however, was how inappropriate it was to strike strident, uh, partisan tones, political partisan tones, at that moment when they didn't even know really what the story was at the Navy Yard. Yeah. And it just, uh, it's a tin ear, and I think he's going to be criticized for it. And his team apparently tried to say, well, gee whiz, we can, you know, presidents do many things at the same time. And I go, yeah, but this isn't just many things. This was... Uh, you know, 12 people on the shooter just got killed. Nobody particularly knows why at the moment or how the shooter got in there or what the plans well, were. And Larry. How are the victims? How are the victims? I mean, to me, it was just insane that he chose that moment to put on his partisan political hat. And at that moment, we, as far as we knew, there were still two potentially uh, two gunmen still at large that we that were looking for. That yeah. is correct. That well, is correct. Well, one is reminded of what happened uh, post Benghazi. The next morning, he gets on a plane, and he went to Las Vegas and did a fundraiser. And, and it still astonishes me that they felt that was the proper thing for the president of the United States to be doing at that particular moment. Okay, but let, let me let me turn to another issue that we in D.C. are, are covering and, and very interested in. Um, today, the, the D.C. Council may try to override this so-called Walmart bill that has been discussed nationwide. They were going to set two different standards. For big retailers, they were going to pay, make them pay twelve fifty an hour. Everybody else gets to pay eight fifty an hour. Now, look, the question is whether or not the council can override the veto. It's still nip and tuck. All they need is one vote. Even if that, uh, that, that gets, uh, uh, the veto is sustained, they are talking about raising the minimum wage uh, over at least two dollars over the next two years minimum wage politics talk about it just a moment well look everybody likes to give away money politicians love to give away money and uh, politicians at least democratic politicians on the left you know want to show that they can just hand out goodies the reality is when you're messing with the minimum wage you're messing with the profits of the individual stores and the overall store across the country i mean walmart is a gigantic employer and the risk is, and the studies show, that if you raise the minimum wage uh, above a certain level, uh, you risk unemployment. That, in fact, the lowest skills uh, on the totem pole are the ones that um, will not get a job. You actually could be raising unemployment. You're actually denying jobs. And we've seen this uh, in a lot of these big you know, chain stores, the low-end chain stores. But the question is, how important is a job? How important is a job? I would say having a job is just about the most important thing in the world mm. for younger people who do not have the skills in business and may not have the uh, benefit of an education in business. So a job, a job is their first real learning experience, and they will be paid what they, uh, the store can bear in terms of um, remaining profitable. And uh, left-wing politicians do not understand the concept of profits, and they just feel that Walmart has all this uh, money that they can spend at whatever minimum wage level they want. I mean, we've seen this in cities that want fair wages. I mean, I don't remember which city it was that wanted $15 an hour huh. uh, to go from whatever, $8 an hour. Well, can, can, Obama wanted 9 and uh, the local city wanted 15 State of California is looking to do it statewide now. It's going to be up to 10 or $11 an hour. Yeah, I mean, what what this will do is curb jobs, okay? They can't, the store cannot 
remain profitable at these levels because the people looking for the jobs, you know, God bless them, they don't have the skill set yet. They can't produce. They don't have the productivity. So this is one of these stupid left-wing ideas that will backfire. <laughs> That's all it will do. All it right. means that there'll be fewer hires, and in the communities, therefore, there will be uh, more unemployment. It's right. just as simple as anything. And the left is just doing this stuff for years without understanding what it does to the very people they say they're trying to help. It keeps them out of the workforce. All right, Larry Kudlow, always good to hear from you, and uh, thanks for everything, as always. Uh, okay. Have a good show today. He's the host of the Cudlow Report on CNBC. Also, the Larry Kudlow show right here on WMAL Saturdays at 7 p.m.